fact that my kids, I have uh, three kids, one's 16, one's 13, and one is uh, seven. And for the longest time, they had zero contribution to society, right? They, they, all they did was take in, right? So they ate, um, they, um, you know, we would clean for them, we would take them to school. They had no contribution to society. As a matter of fact, they probably had a negative productivity to society, right? Like, you know, they produce a lot of waste uh, that, you know, people have to clean up after and they create more work for us parents, right? We need to spend a lot of time driving them around, taking them to school, going to various activities, but they really have no con contribution to society. And, but of course, as they grow up and, and, and uh, finally, uh, Bethany, two weeks ago, she actually started to work at a local preschool. She's watching kids. I was like, wow, finally, you're being productive, right? And then she's actually getting paid for being productive. Um, you know, uh, Elijah, my son, you know, finally, sometimes he's willing to, you know, uh, you know, go walk the dog, right? We have a dog. And, and so he's actually finally, you know, alleviating some of our time. And so finally, they're starting to contribute to the side. But for you sitting in this room, you're at a stage where obviously, you know, you're being, you had been equipped all these years going through school, going to college so that you could be productive in society. But even more importantly, as believers, the Lord has been preparing you, even going through school, even, you know, so that you can now actually be beneficial to the body and you can actually start contributing in a meaningful way to the body of Christ. And so this call, I think for you, um, you know, it's, it's really, uh, this call is, you know, obviously it's, we can make a choice, right? We can be so consumed about our own career. We can worry about like, you know, how much money I'm going to make. You know, some of you might even be thinking about retirement already. And it's like, you know, um, and uh, maybe, maybe not some of you, but maybe just trying to pay out your, your college debt or whatever just getting established. But here, the, the call is, uh, we know we are living in the end times and the Lord is coming back soon. So how can we really be of use for the Lord in His house? And um, so so in that sense, as I guess as, as we grow up, obviously we know, and when we were younger, all we cared about was ourselves, right? So little babies, all they do is they cry. They don't care that they're inconveniencing their mom in the middle of the night. But they're just hungry. They want to eat, right? So they cry. But as we start to grow older, we start to be a little bit more considerate. And in the same way, in the house of God, I think especially for you, if you really have a heart to serve the Lord, Lord, help me to figure out how can I be of help to others? And you kind of start to have an awareness of the body of Christ. And maybe you start to serve in a certain capacity and maybe a little bit more and maybe help even with you know, preparing for this conference. So just a few things I kind of want to bring up more practically um, to think about how some of these things um, in, in how do we go to a slightly higher ground. And, um, you know, we re earlier read a verse that says, you know, do all to the glory of God. And what I really wanted to talk about today was more on, you know, there's certain things that not really explicitly spoken of in the Bible. Now, obviously, we know that we have this anointing within that the Holy Spirit is, is there to, to lead us and teach us and guide us in all things, right? So we know this. And um, in some ways, as we talk about practical matters of our life, I think all of us are very clear about the things that are really, really clearly right or wrong, right? So we know, obviously, even unbelievers know you, you, you shouldn't kill, right? You shouldn't murder. Uh, for us believers, we know there's certain places that we shouldn't go to, right? There's certain websites we shouldn't go to. I mean, for those things that are black and white, you know, we shouldn't, we shouldn't steal, we shouldn't cheat, you know. Um, but we, in some ways for us believers, it, those are actually relatively easy because, you know, we, we, we kind of, it's so clear for everyone to know, okay, this is right or this is not, not right. But what I wanted to share today was how about the things that are a little bit more on the fringes, right? That's not, not so clear, right? And things like gambling and smoking and drinking and dancing. Um, so it may not be a big deal for, for some, but it may be a big deal for some others. 
right? And so how about these things that maybe we don't usually talk about in a message, but maybe just kind of consider this together, right? Um, now, uh, especially for things like, you know, uh, uh, you know, um, I'll give you an example. Let's say drinking, right? Paul says to not get drunk from, with wine because that is dissipation, right? So obviously, so we all know you shouldn't get drunk, right? But then Paul says, well, he says, Timothy, you should take some wine for your, for your stomach ailment, right? So clearly, there's nothing that says you can't drink, but just don't get drunk. And so I think for us, you know, according to, the, you know, we have the Holy Spirit, we have the Word to guide us. And so I think hopefully we are, you know, considering these things. Um, and, um, but what, my, what I wanted to kind of talk a little bit further was, how do we to handle these matters on a higher plane? Now, for all of us, many of us grew up in Christian homes, going to Sunday school, going to youth groups. So you, in some ways, you have all of this, things that you're taught in your head, right? And, uh, you know, I oftentimes have these conversations with my daughter, Bethany. She's, she's, uh, she's 16. And uh, we have some, so, so she actually, a few weeks back, she, she's not, she's not going to happy to say that I say this. She, so she won first place in a debate tournament for like, for her school's JV team, right? Cause she's a sophomore. And I said, well, Clearly, you won because you got good practice at home with with me, right? So like we go at it, and uh, and you know, and again, she'll be unhappy. I said this, but a lot of times she said, "Dad, I know all these things you tell me, right? Like I've I've heard this since I was little, you know, you, because my as if you know Ezra was he he uh, he was he taught high school, and I taught high school at one point here in Flushing as well, and and Kelvin is another brother that you all know." And he said, you guys just ingrained that. Like, I've been ingrained that since I was a child. She should always kind of exaggerate that. But, but then, you know, I was telling her, Bethany, there's, but there's something about taking what's in your head and converting that to your heart. So that when you do or not do something, it's not because there are these rules and regulations that tell me I shouldn't do this, but because there's something in your heart that he says, I, I do this because I want to please the Lord. And my, my hope is that, and for many of you also, you've probably gone through so many conferences, you've held all these things in your head, but sometimes you, you um, it becomes something that you actually resent. So I'll give you another kind of controversial topic amongst believers, which is Halloween. It may not be controversial for some, right? Like, whether it's okay to go trick or treating or not, right? And this, this is, and depending on which family you talk to, they may have a different perspective of this. And, you know, and and I know in some ways, um, maybe my kids, because we, we were, didn't feel so comfortable with it growing up, and it's possible that my kids actually resent that, right? Like, well, how come everybody else gets to do it, and how come some other Christian family kids get to do it, but we don't? And so when it comes to this matter, you know, I said, and um, uh, I said, there's something about knowing it in your head and doing it as an outward practice, kind of like a religious practice, right? Like, I'm not, I shouldn't do this, right? Um, but I'll give you another example, celebrating Christmas. Some, some feel very strongly about one way or the other. We should or we shouldn't, right? So I'm not going to say one way or the other. But how do we navigate those things? And one of the burden that I have is that how do we really learn to be led by the Holy Spirit within so that it's a living thing, so it's not just something outward? Because if it's something outward, we will actually resent it. And as a matter of fact, we might actually run away with it, run away from it, right? And I've known um, Christian kids that grew up in, in kind of more strict environments and once they went to college, okay, you're not going to let me go to parties or, or proms or whatever. In college, they went wild, right? They, they went to, they got drunk. They, they went to drinking parties. They went, they never went to the meeting again, right? Because out, it was always something outward. It never became something that kind of sunk into their heart. So my encouragement is this. 
maybe all of the things that you've heard and, and maybe you cannot process it all. But the hope is that somehow the Lord can translate that into a heart so that it's something living. And so as we navigate these difficult questions, right, and um, that we may learn to take it in uh, and maybe take a step back and say, Lord, what do you want me to do this? As opposed to say, why can I not do this? Because I've heard this a lot from my kids, right? Like, why can I not do this, right? Why can't we go trick-or-treating or whatever? You know, why don't we celebrate this or that, right? And, and turn that and somehow become Lord is not why can I not do this, but I'm doing this because I want to please you. So hopefully that there is that turn and that becomes something living because that's the only time that it is going to be real. Otherwise, it's going to be something that's put on the outside and you're going to see it's not going to last. And maybe you could do it through high school. Once you're in college, I'm going to go to California to go to college because I'm going to stay away from the East Coast. I don't want to talk to my parents again. I'm gone, right? And so maybe that's just an extreme, right? Or others like, I'm just going to go to a a meeting place that's a lot more open and liberal, lets us do things. But the question is, do we do all things to the glory of God? So I haven't told you what's right or wrong, and and I don't want to do that because only the Holy Spirit can lead each one of you in each of your circumstances. But I just want to kind of point out some of the guiding principles, right? And so... Um, because, you know, there's certain, a lot of things that the Bible doesn't clearly talk about, right? The Bible doesn't talk about, as far as I know, it doesn't talk about gambling. I think most of us think, well, gambling might not be the greatest thing, right? You know, um, and uh, the issue with gambling is sometimes it becomes an issue, right? Like, you know, yeah, you ever hear those ads like DraftKings? And then at the end, it's like, if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLING or whatever, right? Because... Sometimes it becomes a slippery slope, right? But, you know, is it okay to buy a lot, uh, a lottery ticket as a believer? I don't know. What do you think, right? So, I, I, and I'm not, my point is not to answer this for you. Is now, maybe wherever you, you met, it's like, absolutely, Christians shouldn't buy a lottery ticket. But maybe you grew up in a place where you're like, nah, it's not a big deal. But then the question is, is this something that's just something on the outside or is something that, okay, Lord, what should I do in this? What's, what, what, what pleases you? What doesn't please you? Right? Smoking. The Bible doesn't talk about smoking. Um, but of course, you always hear, right? Um, well, our body is, is the temple of the Holy Spirit and we should take care of it. Right? And so, um, you know, you could get cancer, lung cancer from smoking. You could get, you know... You could get uh, uh, liver cancer from from drinking, right? So, question is, what do we do? Even though, as I mentioned, or Paul even says, you know, to, to Timothy, you should drink something for your stuff. So, um, and uh, you know, in some some places, uh, people have an you know issue with dancing. Well, David danced in the Old Testament, so is that a good thing or a bad thing? So again, I'm not here to to say things so and then paul says all things are lawful but not all things are profitable now obviously even in this world there's a lot of things that are legal right you could in some places marijuana is legal um and uh, dressing provocatively that's legal right no one says you can't draw drive but is that something that pleases the lord right and uh so again getting very practical you know uh the other day had a conversation with um you know uh someone and uh the question is well why can't christians wear crop tops like you know like why can't you show your belly button like like how do i answer that right we so you know so they're now again so you, you see where I'm getting to? Like there, there are these gray things that the Bible doesn't necessarily say that, but the Bible does say dress modestly for sisters to dress modestly, right? Why? Well, there's 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 things behind all of that. Well, cursing is legal. No one says you can't curse, right? Um, you know, certain activities are illegal in Las Vegas, but is that really the right thing to do, right? So, so and 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 so, how do we deal with all of this? And so I just wanted to share with you
obviously I've shared some verses that not, not all things are profitable. But I think the important thing is, is what is our heart concerning these things? Um, you know, what is our attitude towards these things? Is it a matter of why can't I do these things, like I said? Or if the Bible doesn't prohibit it, then I can do it? Because almost like you're kind of playing with, well, you know, it's, it's, um, uh, it, it's one of those things, well, the Bible doesn't say you can't do it. So as an example, I'm going to turn 21. Oh, I'm going to go drinking because that's now legal now the and and again i'm not trying to say yay or nay um and um and um there are different ways to to do that but what is your heart towards this matter is it a matter of lord am i doing this because it's legal or am i doing this because it pleases you okay so i just asked that question because i bring it to the story of abram and lot and remember, they they were a family, and then at one point they were together. And then what happened was they started to have uh, their own herds of animals, and and the land didn't allow them to stay in the same place anymore, right? So Abram told Lot, said, "Look, go go pick out the land that you want to stay in, and if you go east, I will go west." And the Bible says in Genesis thirteen verse ten, it says, um, "I'll read this." Um, Genesis 13, verse 10 to verse 13 says, Law lifted up his eyes and saw all the valley of the Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt as you go to Zor. So Lot chose for himself all the valley of Jordan, and Lot journeyed eastward. Thus they separated from each other. Abram settled in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled in the cities of the valley and moved his tents as far as Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were wicked exceedingly and sinners against the Lord. Now, Lot could say, well, there was nothing wrong. There was no space left for Abraham and I. I had to have a place to live. But somehow you saw Lot's heart somehow was drawn to this beautiful land, fully watered, beautiful cities. There was some, you know, bright lights uh, of this, of these cities in Sodom and Gomorrah that kind of drew his heart. And so from the get-go, Lot picked an environment already where he was going to be in certain situations that would be different than if he were in Canaan. And you know what happened, right? You remember the whole story that got, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah was exceedingly wicked, right? You know, they, Lot, um, Abraham, uh, had these angels that visited him, and then the men of the city said, you know, let it let them out so we can have relations with them. Think about it. All the men of the city. Now, we talk about the, the kind of generation we live in, and, you know, you talk about um, gender uh, issues and all of this, right? And and this is probably a part of the, you know, it's a it's a percentage of the population, right? But at that time, it says all the men of the city. So it was not just a few, it was all of them, right? Wanted to have relations with these men. So, you know, so what we see today is not anything new, right? So back in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, it was already a reality. Yet, somehow, when Lot kind of picked those, but, you know, this is kind of the land of Canaan, kind of the promised land, right? It's right on the border and the fringes, right? But somehow Lot already put him and his family in a situation where it would get really complicated. Because later on, God actually destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And in his mercy, because of Abraham's sake, he was actually going to try to save the family. Now, Lot had two daughters. His son-in-law thought he was just joking, right? Oh, this is not going to happen. God's not going to destroy this, right? And then, but somehow God said, run, took have the angel said, let's go away. And then what did the Bible say? When the angels were going to bring Lot and the family out, it said Lot hesitated. Lot was like, Lot, I kind of like this place. Don't, you know, don't destroy it. Don't take me out. So the angels had to drag Lot with them and said, don't look back. And what happened to Lot's wife? She looked back, right? So somehow her heart was so drawn to, to these things. And, uh, and uh, she became a pillar of salt, right? And obviously there's a lot of salt there and, there's different theories on why she became a pillar of salt, but most importantly was 
her heart was somehow drawn to that and became a pillar of salt. So finally, Lot and, and the daughters were delivered. But brothers and sisters, here is an example of Lot already put himself in a situation where um, he could be relatively easy comprom easily compromised. Right? So here is, uh, so here is um, a lesson for us is are we putting ourselves in a situation where the, our, our, our behavior or, or, or things could be compromised? And uh, there was uh, there's the Billy Graham, as you know, he was a great uh, evangelist. He once said that, he once testified, he never put himself in a situation where him and another sister or another woman will be in the same room with the door closed, okay? So he would never get in a car with just him and another uh, uh, woman. Or if he, were to, if he were counseling some sister or some uh, woman, he would always leave the door open, right? Because he didn't want to leave himself in a compromised situation. Now, Billy Graham was a man of God, but he also did not trust himself because he knew he was a sinner. So brothers and sisters, Whenever, so when, when, when Paul says flee from youthful lusts, it's because he knows what's inside of us. Brothers and sisters, you and I know, like we're so easily tempted, right? So do, do you put yourself in a situation where you can be compromised and where Satan can actually easily entice you? So, um, uh, so that, that is something that's really important. So there may be not situations where it may not be wrong, but are you putting yourselves in a in a place where things could go wrong, right? So, um, you know, you could say, "Well, I'm a principal person. Um, you know, my friend may have a party, but you may know what's what's happening there." And but by just by going, you may put yourself in a situation where it may not turn out that great. Now. Um, and there are certain places when you go, you know, uh, and you go maybe to have a, a fun time, right? So they call it happy hour because people are happy, right? When they, they drink, they, they're happy. But why? Now, again, um, another thing about this is there are certain things that are there because they lower our inhibitions, right? Um, when you drink. It lowers your inhibition. When you take marijuana, it lowers your inhibitions. Now, it's really interesting because um, English we say lower inhibition, but in in Chinese, it actually there's a term that says it actually emboldens your courage. Zhuang dan, right? Because there's certain things that you probably wouldn't do if you're sober and you're like really, you know. But then you become bold after you have a couple of drinks or you have some marijuana, right? Because now you do things that you wouldn't dare do before. And as a matter of fact, a lot of unbelievers do that because, well, partly because their life is pretty miserable and they want to forget all their problems and, and all of that, right? So but then the other question is, do we need that to give us happy hour or they have other things, spiritual things that can make us happy, right? So, but the thing is here, um, it emboldens us to do things that maybe we wouldn't do if we were of the right mind. So just a few things. Are, now, you know, those terrorists, um, uh, terrorist groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda, what they used to do was for those that were going to go to their suicide bomb missions, they would actually give them drugs. Because once they took the drugs, it emboldened them. They were no longer afraid. You know, if you're in your right mind, you wouldn't be able to blow, you know, blow a plane up. But because they're high, they're able to do these things. So, brothers and sisters, again, are you putting yourself in a situation where you things may be under control in the beginning, but it could get out of control? So that's why a lot of really bad things happen at at some of these places, right? Like. You know, when um, uh, 
you know, sexual assaults happen when when people are drunk, right? Like they don't they don't know what to. They had no, they can't couldn't control themselves. And so, I just kind of wanted to bring this up. Now, um, again, if uh, in certain situations, in the comfort of your own home, things are completely appropriate, and I'm not saying they're not, but I'm just saying. What is your heart at the end of the day? And and so just wanted to bring these things up, right? And um, um, for us to consider, what is our heart? And are we going to be like Lot? Which is like, our hearts are really drawn to that, right? In some ways, you know, I, I never got to do this when I was younger as a believer. Now I'm just going to explore and it's okay. The Bible says, so long as I don't get drunk, right? But are you putting yourselves in a situation where before you know it, you can't control yourself and you you may slip up, right? Just like Billy Graham, he didn't trust himself, right? And, uh, you know, maybe, um, you know, it's, you know, another example might be, hey, I'm just going to go to Atlantic City and just play the slot machine, right? It's, no, no harm. No, it's just going to walk there, right? But what's to say that you don't get sucked into it, right? Like buying a lottery ticket doesn't seem like a big deal. But before you know it, you're like spending more and more money, right? Because that's what happens, right? So it happens with gambling. And uh, I don't think any alcoholic ever went out thinking that, hey, I want to be an alcoholic. It was just I'm a social drinker more and more and then because before you know it makes me happy it, it reduces my inhibition right and people say well you know it's just marijuana i'm just 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 a you know harmless but you'll hear all the drug addicts say, oh i started with marijuana and then it was like i started doing heroin and then i don't know what else is even worse right fentanyl whatever and hard drugs right so but anyway look again i just kind of wanted to uh, lay this out there that's one aspect but probably a second aspect which is probably even more important is this as i mentioned to you we are in the body of christ and as we grow up we now don't just have a responsibility for ourselves but for those around us as well so paul says that um um says we are that I also please all men in all things, not thinking my own profit, but the profit of the many. And we read earlier in the in the verses was, um, and, oh, sorry, we didn't read this. Oh, yes, we did. Uh, Paul read, we read in 1 Corinthians 10, 23, all things are lawful, but not all things are profitable. All things are lawful, but not all things edify. Let no one seek his own good, but that of his neighbor. And the Lord himself also said, Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it will be better for him to have a heavy millstone hung around his neck. Now, I think none of you have kids, but I have kids, right? And eventually, hopefully, many of you will have kids. You start to realize, obviously, as parents, you have a great responsibility, especially as believing parents. You have a huge responsibility. There's these little lambs or sheep that the Lord has entrusted to you. You have a responsibility. But brothers and sisters, maybe you don't have kids, but you definitely have others in the youth group that are younger than you. That you have a responsibility in your behavior in not stumbling them. And because, like it or not, they're watching you. Like it or not, one day they're going to say, oh, I did this because such and such also did this. It's no big deal, right? So this is the other aspect of the second aspect that we that we want to consider that whatever we do, we are to do to His glory, but we also are to do because we have a responsibility. Now, Lot had a responsibility when he picked a location where to live, right? Because he chose the Valley of Jordan, he had a responsibility to his wife, to his daughters, and his son-in-laws. Think about it. At the end of the day, his wife became a pillar of salt, and his son-in-laws died. Now, that first step that Lot took was he already put himself in a situation where it 
not just stumbled his wife and his son-in-laws, but actually cost them their life. So brothers and sisters, you know, obviously that kind of is an extreme, but in some ways we have a responsibility to the younger brothers and sisters around us to be an example to them. And so that's why Paul says, if eating meat causes my brother to stumble, I'd rather not eat meat ever again. Right? He said that. And then there's another verse that he said this. Um, he, uh, he said uh, in Romans chapter 14, he says, It is good not to eat meat or to drink wine or to do anything by which your brother stumbles. If my brother's going to stumble, I'm never going to do it again. Paul was ready to do that. So that's the question that we have. Are we willing for our brother and sister's sake not to do certain things, especially in front of them, okay? Maybe there's something different about doing in the comfort of your own home. But we should be careful the things that we do and we bring others to do, right? Now, maybe um, maybe you have the right state of mind to be able to make the right decisions in different situations. So as an example, right? Like maybe, you know, if you go to a bar, you're going to be able to be very smart about it. You know, whatever you do, you'll do in moderation and all of that. But if you bring a younger brother and sister to that same situation, they may not have the same maturity as you, but they may not know how to distinguish between right or wrong, right? Going to uh, a club or something, you may have the right mind and you may have the right relationship with the Lord that you may make all the right decisions, but your younger brother and sister that may not have the same distinction may be brought into a situation where they can't handle it. And whereas you may be able to handle it in a way that can be responsible, you may actually stumble them. And they're like, hey, so-and-so went there, so, so can I. But in that situation, that brother or sister can be easily taken away, right? So, so you, you get what I'm saying is, so brothers and sisters, when we, when we do certain things, now we have a responsibility, not just to ourselves, but also those that are around us. Um, so just a reminder, Paul said, you know, if it's going to cause them to stumble, I'd rather not do it. And uh, um, so it is good not to eat meat. Oh, so I already read this. Um, and so, again, coming back to these are very practical things and um, things that we have to deal with uh, maybe every day of our lives, but especially as maybe all of you and have a heart to serve the Lord and to be of use to them. I think all of these things now start to become really important. And so, um, you know, so just say this as a matter of encouragement. Again, I'm, I'm not saying what things are right or wrong or whether um, they, um, uh, you know, and, and a lot of the things are gray. And the Bible doesn't explicitly say yes or not. And of course, we have the guiding principles of the word. But probably even more than that, right? So just as, as our brother Lucy to encourage us to go to a higher plane. It's like, what is it that you want from me, Lord? And it's not just something external now. What can I do to please you? And um, uh, now we all know that, that Paul talks about the fact that we're not just justified by faith, but we're also sanctified. Sanctification means to be separated out. The question is, as an unbeliever sees us, well, they actually see a different behavior than anybody else, right? So, you know, the most obvious is probably language, right? You know, at, at work, you know, hopefully none of us have bad language, right? And they'll be like, oh, okay, he's a Christian, right? And how about everything else that we do? Can people actually see that we're different? Or are we just like everybody else, right? Um, and, and there is no nothing that really distinguishes us. So that's always kind of also our guiding principle. And, and so what does that mean? All of us have to seek before the Lord and every situation might be different. So I'll tell you. And, and, and um, now the thing is this, God is holy and we must be holy. Now the interpretation of that might change over time and the Holy Spirit may use that a little bit differently. Now I always remember my dad when he was young, now they were very strict, right? Now he, he came from a background that, and you know, over time, 
there's been different influence, right? So the influences of the Puritans, right? They're very much, you know, can't do this, you know, absolutely no alcohol, no, no movies, no dancing, whatever. So my father grew up in that kind of environment. But the Holy, the, the Lord could still use it, that very situation um, to, to help him in his generation, right? But all of us have to kind of seek our, seek what the Lord wants to do now. So he always talks about the fact that, you know, in those days, it was, you know, going to movie theater was perceived as a, something worldly, right? So then him and this other brother, uh, they decided to go watch the movie Jesus Christ Superstar. He's like, wow, look, now that's a proper movie. It's a Christian movie about Jesus. Of course we should go. Now it was a dead middle of summer in Taiwan. It was probably like 100 degrees. And so him and his, this brother went. He's like, wow, we want to go, but we don't want to stumble anybody. So they wore raincoats and covered their heads. And the two brothers, they went in and they... They watched, they went into the movie theater, like, oh, great. Now on the cover of darkness, there's no brothers and sisters that could see them. They're not going to stumble anybody. But the funny thing, or the funny thing was, both of them started to feel like this, this thing inside, this grieving of the Holy Spirit inside of them. They said, we could barely watch 10 minutes. And he said, are you okay? He said, no. Are you okay? No. Let's go. And so they went and left the theater, right? So... The, the wonderful thing about that it was the Holy Spirit was able to use whatever circumstance they were in, uh, but how can I please the Lord? So I just share that as an example because in some ways, maybe there aren't things that are absolutely right or wrong, right? Just like Paul said, not, you know, everything's lawful, but what is it that can really edify the certain situation? So, and it might not apply today, right? So, you know, I, I don't know rightly or wrongly. I don't think that much when I go to a movie theater today, like my dad did, right? But, or maybe I should, but what I'm just saying is that the, the, the Lord can, will teach us in all things, but maybe we could just consider our ways in, in, in a very practical matter is, Lord, I, I want to go to a higher plane. Where, where, how, how is it should I conduct my life for myself so I don't put myself in a certain situation, but also in a way that can please you, but also how can I help my younger brothers and sisters? Or how can I not stumble them by the things that I do? And, uh, you know, obviously we need to be accountable to the, to the Lord and to what the whole, how the Holy Spirit leads us. But I just want to encourage you, especially you of this age, because now you have some maturity. Now you have the real ability to influence other brothers and sisters, those that are still downstairs, high school, middle school kids, that all of your actions, trust me, will impact them. So many times, my, my, um, both uh, Bethany and, and 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 my son Elijah, and some of you may know Noah and Hannah, they always say, "Well, Hannah and Noah did this. Why can't we?" Okay. So just and they're they're older, right? Now they've graduated from college. So trust me, they will they will look up to you. They'll they'll say, "Hey, um, Leon did this," or or, or Tim, you know, it must be okay, right? So, and fairly or not fairly, rightly or wrongly, which they probably shouldn't, right? But they will do this. So my encouragement to you is now we have to think not just about ourselves, but also others. As we consider our ways, it's not just a matter of obviously, obviously we need to seek the things that are above, but we also to be examples for, for the younger brothers and sisters. Now, we can really help them, right? And and there's nothing more than being an actual example. Now, you know, you don't need me to tell you, right? A lot of kids turned up really messed up because they never had a good example at home from their parents. So in the same way, maybe some of them may not have come from, you know, the, the best of environments, but now in the meeting, they're like, wow, I have a brother, older brother or sister I can look up to, to serve as my example as to how how I should conduct myself, how am I to behave. And um, so this is just an encouragement for all of you um, to, to consider our ways. Um, and uh, so I'll just share, I just wanted to share these words. Maybe we just uh, bow with a word of prayer. Um, Lord, we commit these words back into your hands. Lord, we pray that you may teach us 
Lord, how to please you in all, all respects. Lord, there are some of these practical things that are difficult to navigate. And Lord, we pray that you may help us to be able to navigate to those, not just for ourselves, but for those around us and younger brothers and sisters, that we may serve an example to them. Lord, we, we just pray, Lord, that there, there may be a sensitivity towards you. And Lord, not for us to become resentful of, of what we heard or, or, or didn't uh, hear, Lord, but we pray, Lord, that we may have the right balance. So Lord, we look to you for, for your grace and your mercy. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So we have a little bit of time, and I don't know if maybe we could have some, if any one of you have any questions or something you wanted to share or experiences you want to share. We have, how many more minutes do we have? Uh, six? Oh, okay. Oh, that clock is slow. All right, we have six minutes. Anyone have any questions or thoughts or something they want to share? Go ahead. Uh, speaking to the mic. Oh, no, 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 it's okay. Oh. So we're like sharing the mic. So I, I like what you said about like, it's not like just like the things that are in your head, but like, like it translates into your heart. And I think that was something that really came to me because I remember like, you know, I grew up in a Christian house and all these like Sunday school lessons go like go to one ear to the other. But I don't really translate to my heart. So that was like a really good reminder that it's not just like what comes to my head, but like what do I do once it comes into my head? Like, like how I should react. And I'm just anxious about it and hearing it. So I thought that was really convincing. Something I look forward to doing and transferring to my heart. I'm really praying for that too. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I actually had a not too long. This week I was with uh, two of my buddies and they're they're like older than me, but um, you know, we're we're at a restaurant eating and then they were like joking around like, Hey Brian, when you turn twenty one, we need to make sure you take a lot of shots. I'm like, No, I ain't doing that. Uh and then they're just like excuse, they're like, Why? It's just like everybody else does it. Um, but then you know, it's just a thing in the heart. It's like not because uh, it's not because I don't drink right now because I'm not lawfully legal to, and it's not because I don't necessarily want to like stay pure, but you know, it's just that I want to please God and everything. So, like, just for me personally, like, I don't have any desire to ever touch alcohol in a way, like, you know, uh, drinking like that. But yeah, just personal experience. Mm -hmm. know your motives for doing what you do like i've given up some things in the past that you know people who aren't walking with the lord i'm very close to know about and they're gonna think you're crazy you know they're gonna have because they know you you know it's always terrifying when people know you and they're gonna say i know that this happened you were a kid and that's why you're doing this and you know you did talk to the therapist i'm like oh you know me really well and you're this is a lot of me just scoop that section of what's wrong with me and you really gotta stick. You gotta cling to your motivation, or else you're just someone who has an arbitrary list of things you decided not to do because you thought it makes you a better person. It has to be something you're doing with the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, because that's what gives it. That's what gives it its meaning. Mm -hmm. Questions for you. <laughs> All right. Um, and I'm not necessarily the one answer going to answer it, but you said share. It's, it sounds like for a lot of people, personally, that's more of a conservative. Like a conservative, a conservative yeah, like that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Was there ever was like, did you ever like feel strange when you were supposed to deal with that? Because that second question is like, what? what at what point did you did it become a matter of how how did you get drafted? Was it gradual? Yeah. Um uh, yeah, I think it was gradual. Now, 
Ezra and Esther will tell you, they went to Christian school. So all their classmates are the same. So they had no issue. So Ezra said, I never resented the fact that my, okay, my dad was very strict when they were, when they were little. My, 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 my sister, Esther, wasn't allowed to wear jeans because in the Bible it says women should not wear men's clothing. So at the time, okay, just kind of how my dad interpreted it, she was not allowed to. But she said she never really resented it because her friends were all Christians too. So she thought that was just the right thing. Uh, for Ezra, he'll say the same thing. So he was not allowed to play the guitar because that was worldly. And I ended up playing guitar in the meeting, right? So he's like, what's it? He, he'll jokingly say, but he's, he'll tell you also that like, it, he didn't really have an issue. He thought it was okay. It was that. Now, I went to Christian school through sixth grade. Middle school, I went to public school in, in Taiwan. But they were really like, just like really rowdy and, you know, um, I did some things that my brother and sister never had to, you know, I, I rode a scooter around without a license and I did some <laughs> other things. But, uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, all the things I, the things I told you not to do, like, yeah, so uh, I remember like in, I think it was, I think it was a, I was a freshman and I, 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 um, one of my friends, she was like a senior. Now, we weren't dating. She actually liked someone um, else that we were hanging out with. And one night, um, we were just, um, we just stayed out all night and I didn't go home, I didn't tell anybody. It's like, okay, this really silly, stupid things like that. And the Lord protected me through it all. But so for me, yes, I, I, I definitely was, uh, resented a little bit more than Ezra and, and Esther. Um, now, I think in my head, I understood a lot of the reasonings, right? Um, and so, um, but it was, it wasn't, I, I would think, I, I, I would say it wasn't until after college when I actually started to appreciate some of the things I had heard before, right? And then it started to convert into something okay now i understand why right and uh i can i you know i really was able to because i was i was as a matter of fact probably even earlier um even in high school now um i had no desire to go to my proms okay okay uh, maybe you all did I, but for me personally i just felt like and I want to put myself in that situation because, um, you know, certain things that happen in prom and you hear about. And, and at that time, the Lord was already laying hold of my heart, right? So, but again, it's, it might be, it wasn't a thing for me, but it, in a situation it might be different for you, for you. But I think slowly the Lord started to, to change my perspective. Like, you know, the renewing of the mind, uh, it slowly becomes something like oh okay that that really makes sense it's it's gradual right it's not going to happen overnight but um but i could obviously but i can tell you it's going to take some time now i know for my kids a lot of it's still in there and they're kind of resentful like because i i've heard like one of my kids say well i'm going to let my kids trick or treat right you know like um and um uh, and so so it's it's interesting now, again, I, I'm not really answering your question that well, but and if you ask Brother Kong, and I, I maybe shouldn't say that, but he, he will tell you that if you read about birthdays in the Bible, they were always bad, always bad, right? So in that generation, my parents' generation, they never celebrated birthdays, you know, but we, we are okay with birthdays, right? So, so, but the spirit of it, you understand what perspective they had, right? And and but I think over time as we mature, it, it it slowly changed over time. And and now I can say I understand with my heart why these things. And I can understand also if someone is okay with it, because there's nowhere in the Bible that says you can't drink. It's you know, and and some people grew up in in a family, they they show socially socially drink, it's perfectly okay. And and it's in a moderation. Everything's okay, but just for 
But I think that's the thing with is everybody has to kind of seek their own thing about, okay, well, what do you want me to do now? Anyway, so I didn't really answer your question, but I think it's, I think because it was gradual, like with anything like spiritual things is the Lord had to slowly kind of renew our mind to kind of start to think about it in those terms. So, sorry, I didn't quite. Oh, okay. Ten, ten minutes. Did I answer your question? Sorry? Yeah. Anyone else? Any? Do you have any advice for trying to cast down like certain things like it's your conviction, but like some of us work in youth stuff and a lot of the people who are younger than us are involved in some very worldly stuff. Like it and we don't really know how to cast down Maybe don't listen to that. Maybe don't watch that because we don't want to be legalistic. But at the same time, we want them to know that that's not something we want to do. Or do you have any advice on how to do that without being with everybody? Hmm. That's a tough question. Um, yeah, I think that the tough thing is is a lot of it is is what is allowed at the home. Right? And uh, as just brothers and sisters, you're not with them all the time. And a lot of times, you know, maybe they grew up, it was perfectly fine. They maybe they don't have believing parents or, or really parents that are walking with the Lord. They may have a very different perspective. Um, I think the, you know, we're encouraged to speak the truth in love. And sometimes a lot of it is kind of explaining the, the whys behind it, right? So, um, you know, and, and and it may or may not, it may take time for it to actually sink in, but there may be some principles that you can share with them. Why is it that we don't want to do that, right? So maybe listening to a certain song, it, it may have bad lyrics in it, right? And, you know, because um, a lot of things of the world is is really, the, the, the enemy is very crafty. And the things that he, he does is to try to draw you in to sin, right? And so... You know, I don't need to tell you a lot of these lyrics of these songs. It's all about, you know, very, you know, things that are quite to, to draw you into sin, right? It's about like physical relationship and all of that, right? So, so there's some things that are clearly bad, but then there are other things that are that are a little bit subtle in in how the the enemy does it, in the name of doing the right thing, right? So even like the, uh, a lot of things are tagged as human rights, right? The right to, you know, make decisions for my own body, you know, or the right to feel what I feel or whatever, right? And so, um, you know, but I think it's the important thing is, I, especially with younger, is to explain the logic behind it. It may not register now, but it may register later. But the worst thing is to say, don't do it, right? Like what happens is we, don't, we just don't do that, right? But then there, there may be a real resentment over time, right? Um, and so, uh, so I think it's, it's important to explain the why. So for, as an example, right, why is, was Halloween bad, right? Well, because it used to be um, supposedly the day where they would, uh, the, the, I think it was the god of death would, would send out the spirits and people would dress up so that the evil spirits would think that you're one of them or whatever and and then you leave out treats and so there's there's different things right so so maybe there's an explanation of why you know i i i someone explained to me why they didn't celebrate birthdays because you know the focus is on me and then in the bible you know generally wasn't really great when it was birthday so so i understood it right and and I can process it, and then I need to kind of take back. But it took me some time to kind of get to it. So I think the important thing is not just to say, don't do it. I think that's the problem. What, what happens is if we have a tendency to explain, you know, um, 
And uh, so as an example, we, um, I think most of you probably know, but maybe some of you don't. And this is sometimes controversial. It's like, okay, why is, why do some, you know, I have, you know, we didn't celebrate Christmas growing up, right? Because I was told that, you know, Christmas came as a, 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 about as a result of the fact that Constantinople, uh, Constantine, uh, at the time, he made Christianity national religion. It's like, we need to celebrate something for Jesus, right? And December 25th was the birthday of the sun god. And since Jesus is a son of righteousness, let's make that his birthday, right? Because if you want to get technical, right? Um, when the Lord was born, there were shepherds out in the field. They're not out in the field in December. Right? So it's more likely around the Feast of the Tabernacles, around October is when the Lord probably was born. So growing up, that's what I was taught. And that's why it's not the birthday. But Christmas is really nice time of the year. I mean, the, 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 the atmosphere is great. And, and, and interesting, you know, I was just reading this morning, like, who am I to judge my brother or sister or whatever? And they said, if they do it unto the Lord, they're doing it unto the Lord. There's so many... And there's so much, you know, gospel meetings that happen around that time and people come to the Lord as a result. So who am I to say A or nay? But then for me personally, it was just like, okay, this is why. And then I had to explain to my kids, right? Because I was, why is it that, you know, maybe that's not the Lord's birth. And the Lord actually asks us to remember his death, not his, not his birth, right? So every week we're celebrating his death and resurrection because that's what the Lord asks us to remember. Right, but anyway, so but I have some really close Christian friends that you know it's it's something they've done for for me and and it's perfectly okay and and I have nothing against that right so again I think that's where but the important thing is if if you decide to go one or the other it's important to explain to them why and so um. So that's the thing. So you know, I didn't want to bring that up because that one is it's a very sensitive one. Like people get very, you know, because it's it, for, for some families, it's a very important holiday, right? And so I don't want to take anything away from it, but I just kind of want to explain to you like that. And, and I, that was the whole purpose of this workshop was like to talk about some controversial things. And I may not necessarily, you may not necessarily agree with me on some of these things, but the, hopefully you get like the spirit is right. So your question, how do you help them? I think important is to explain this is why, you know, and, and you may not understand it now, but maybe in a few years you might. I, I tell my kids that and they hate it when I say that. It's like one day, as you know, one day you'll thank me. Like they hate it when I said that, right? So I try to avoid saying that, but at least in their head, they're like, okay, this is the logic X, Y, Z. But then your hope is that one day that will, will convert it to, okay, I now understand it with my heart. Why is it that? He said that to me at the time, right? And, uh, you know, um, so, I, I, you know, I, it's a hard question, but hopefully I'll answer it as best I could. Is that? Yeah, go ahead, yeah. So, there's also, like, an element of the, the personal connection. So that doesn't need to come with any share of luggage with you. So how is it impacted you? Like, how, how is that why? That's right. Yes. No, that's a good point. Good point. Very hard not to try to put it on and be like this. Give me this. <laughs> You're acting like a parent. <laughs> yeah, you'll see. You'll see. Yeah. 
Eventually, the end of the day, I was forced to admit that that it might be something not so significant. You know, maybe they're used here in the state or something. To assume that our what how, what we perceive as reality is someone else's is unfair because someone else might have gone through. They got like we have different experiences, different family worlds, and different upgrades, different this and that. Maybe there's something else that you don't know, and that's why they're doing that. And, I'm going to approach it a little more like open mindedness in some sense, like some some sense, but really for a right sense, like of course I'm here and understand it, but like then we can like share it. Yeah. No, it's a great point. Like the you know, the fact that you don't you don't know what the other family grew up with and and, and so um I think that's why it's always good to be extra sensitive and it's like okay lord should i really do this and you know what impact will i have on other brothers and sisters because they may not have had the same perspective and and the same you know so that's very helpful yeah. okay i think our time is up so thank the lord maybe uh maybe uh two or three of you could just Commit the time back to the Lord.